don't know whether you've had a look at the general directory for catechesis, but there's a very interesting section in there. It says, if you want to catechise children, you've got to catechise the parents. It's almost a stipulation. You can't really do one without the other. But we know, don't we, that parents find this hard. It's almost as if, ooh, the most important things in life are the hardest to talk about, and so gradually we don't talk about them. We almost avoid them, perhaps. So here's the thing. I remember being at college years ago. I hadn't had an easy time with my parents, and um, I remember once I'd left home, suddenly realising just how much they'd done for me, and I'd probably had a couple of drinks, and I remember thinking, I'll ring my dad and just thank him for putting up with me. It was a noble idea, you know. I rang him one evening and just said, look, about last year, you know, thank you. And he replied, thank me, thank me, he said, you've no idea. I remember thinking, this isn't going very well, is it? But actually, he added a beautiful piece of wisdom. He said to me, David, you don't need to thank me. I'm your dad. I love you. And then there was a pause, and here comes the genius. He said to me, if you've learned anything from me, don't give it back to me. Give it to your kids. He was referring to something very powerful and noble. That parental love, at its best, doesn't look for return, doesn't look for an investment. It's not looking for profit. It's totally self-giving. It's generous. And then it invests in those who come after. We give ourselves, ultimately, in a sense, to our children. So when we're catechising, we must be very careful to respect the nobility of parenthood, if you like. The church teaches in the directory for catechesis that parents are the primary educators of the children. I think we tend to imagine that means first, but it doesn't mean first. It means consistently the primary educators of their children. You know this to be true. The impact of your parents on you is still alive and present. I'm still very conscious of everything my mum and dad did for me, and some of it I'm only learning now. So we want you, as much as you can, to help the parents grow in confidence, to sit shoulder to shoulder with their children, learning, growing in the faith as they do so. They don't need to be teachers in the school or university sense. They need to be accompaniers, sitting at their child's side, enjoying the questions, considering the answers and participating in the activities. Not just about the First Communion Day, but about what it means and what it offers and the joy it brings. Involve the parents and you're doing something for the children. In the General Directory for Catechesis, it explains carefully what the role of parents are in the formation of their children. It says that they witness more than they teach. It tells us that it's occasional and event-led rather than a curriculum, like a systematic programme, that the parents are there when the children's questions are real. I remember on one occasion, Sam sitting at the foot of my bed when Alison was away, asking me about what love is. I suspect he was falling in love himself. But you see, at those moments, it's the parents who are there, not the catechists. 
And that's why any opportunity to involve parents is so crucial. On one occasion, perhaps the most ironic, my mum, in a distressed state, feeling old and frail, I remember her saying to my children, don't remember me like this. Remember me younger. I'm with your granddad in a meadow somewhere, having a picnic. We're laughing. She was introducing them to eternity, to a life remembered but cherished in joyfulness. It's families that do that work. And so we, as catechists, have to do our best to involve the families as much as we possibly can. So, take a look at the quote. It's followed by a couple of questions. You know what to do.